Hollywood celebrities dazzle it with diamonds, the icing sugar that does the beast's PR, all serving to glamorise the imperial machinery and to turn the system itself into a star. Hollywood's war films can only be made with Pentagon approval, since it's the Pentagon that'll be laying on all the gear, and, if it's supplying the firepower, it wants the Empire's antics to appear heroic and to be morally in the clear. It's a system with blind eyes turned towards police violence, a system whose prisons are privatised for profit. So it's in a money-grubbing judiciary's interests to imprison, thus keeping their law and order racket in credit. But there's one law for police and one for civilians. A homeless schizophrenic on the highway, Kelly Thomas, is beaten to death with police nightsticks, without his assailants being detained for a day. In Los Angeles, eight police officers fire 103 times at two unarmed women, Emma Hernandez and her daughter, Margie Carranza. They were delivering newspapers in the early morning, but no police are fired or even suspended. The North Carolina parents of Keith Vidal, aged 18, call 911, saying their son looks threatening. A policeman impatiently says, I haven't got time for this, and quickly shoots him, rather than tasering. An 80-year-old retired engineer is machine-gunned. He's unarmed and fast asleep in his bed. Eugene Mallory was no threat to the Los Angeles police. Yet a deputy sheriff shoots him stone dead. According to the Malcolm X grassroots movement, chronicling America's repressive powers, a person of colour is killed by a security officer every 28 hours. Mussolini described fascism as corporate power plus violence, and a militarised America neatly fits into the fascist dictator's description, heightened by its flag-waving hysteria. Just like the Nazis, whom Hollywood milks as their eternal enemy number one, America refuses to accept international law, denying it's answerable for its crimes. It spurns the International Criminal Court by its refusal to become a signatory, for it knows it'd be liable for its serial crimes and who'd be associated with atrocity. In its torture chambers in Bagram and Guantanamo and in its worldwide rendition sites, the un-American, is hooded, starved and beaten to death, following sleep deprivation every night. After 9-11, the President approved waterboarding and prisoners being slammed into walls. Electric shocks to the genitals yield no useful information, but the CIA's dark side ignores all laws. America spends half of every single tax dollar on defence, though what's meant by defence is really aggression. Yet in three centuries, it's had nothing to defend itself against, the main threat to it being its own lack of reason. The United States has attacked some 44 countries since August 1945, and promising regime change, democracy and American values it leaves its beneficiaries more dead than alive. In 2007, an internal Pentagon memo brazenly described how it was going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off with Iran. Its malevolence hidden in plain sight. Each White House contains a cabal of grinning King Herods who serially murder the innocent on behalf of a swaggering debtor nation armed to the teeth, which regards criticism of America as wickedness. The National Security Agency has a special category for those who take America to task, 
those abroad are called malicious foreign actors, just for seeing its foreign policy is unmasked. In Korea, according to the bragging of General Curtis LeMay, America destroyed every building taller than one story. It killed a third of the population, turning three million people into bit-part players for a thuggish state's glory. The nine-year bombing of Laos was the most protracted bombing of civilian targets in world history. The country was obliterated with two million tons of bombs from 1964 to 1973. In the plain of Jars in northern Laos, the CIA would bribe Hmong tribesmen to draw Laotian fire. This then served as a signal to American B-52 planes to bomb villages in a display of their power. In Vietnam, America was killing 6,000 people a week. And yet America is so proud of its record that it commemorates the 50th anniversary of its crimes. It's celebrated its odious Asian genocide. It's killed four million. It's drenched the country in Agent Orange, for which it's paid nothing in compensation. But it's caused hereditary birth defects that have now affected Southeast Asia for four generations. While spilling 13 million gallons of chemicals over 5 million acres of Vietnam's forests and agricultural lands, the US Air Force said that the defoliants they were spraying were perfectly safe. They just kill plants. America's been warring against the rest of the world in one, two, three, and four world wars. World War Three was the Cold War, and now it makes money for its 1% through World War Four. America is putting whole countries on its kill lists, moving zombie-like from victim to victim. Here's Venezuela, there's Ukraine. Whenever we want, we can foment conflict. A Major Ralph Peters declares the de facto role of the U.S. Armed Forces will be to keep the world safe for our economy and open to our cultural assault. The American Major supports the world's biggest outlaw, to whom nothing's ever America's fault. My own concern, Noam Chomsky has said, is primarily the terror and violence carried out by my own state because it happens to be the larger component of international violence. And what else can that do but attract hate? If America could be characterized as a single person, people might be tempted to call for its execution, to bay for this pariah's blood outside the prison gates, and to cheer at the problem's final solution. Its car economy pioneered interference with the world's climate, whose continuing change shows intelligence to be lacking, for America goes on destroying itself and others through its oil wars, and now it asphyxiates itself through its fracking. South Texas has seen 7,000 fracking wells. It's as if the whole state is self-harming. The waters, undrinkable, the air's unbreathable, and its gas pollution contaminates farming. Through drilling, warmongering, and now fracking, America is lighting the fuses of the biggest carbon bombs on the planet. This ecocidal rapist, whose every attempt at a remedy is useless. In 2012, in Cushing, Oklahoma, the president declares that, under my administration, America produces more oil today than for the last eight years. His bragging receives cheers instead of protestation. In Congress, the standard of debate is never much higher than Congressman Joe Barton with his loony apology for being opposed to taking steps to combat climate change by employing any alternative technology. Sitting on the House Energy Committee, the Texas congressman claimed, Wind is a finite resource, and using wind power would slow the wind down. 
and this would reduce the wind's cooling power and cause the temperature to go up, adding to climate change. If you're white and mentally defective, then you get into Congress. If you're black and on death row and mentally challenged, like Ricky Ray Rector, who said he'd be keeping his dessert for later when eating his last meal, then, then you have to be executed. The military-industrial complex causes global warming while mad petrol heads melt the permafrost, rumoured to reactivate long-hidden Neanderthal viruses, meaning humanity could be wiped out and lost. Yet, sometimes, the quiet voice of common sense still surfaces, such as, We can't feed the poor, but we can fund a war. Or, If we learn to share, there will be enough for everyone. And, thanks to history, such voices can become a roar. People know that no one ever rids themselves of oppression by appealing to the morality of their oppressors. But when a society is dominated by warmongering billionaires and it's drowning in debt, then the show's over. The heartening cry of the Occupy movement has been Another world is possible. And, thankfully, throughout history, empires have to end when their love of worldly power becomes laughable.